everybody, and welcome to a new episode of Totally Naked. If this is your first time here with us, let me introduce who we are. We are a group of young people whose mission is to transform and uplift the kingdom of God by tackling everyday issues with Christian Solutions. I am your girl, Dom, and I am accompanied by my wonderful co-hosts, April T. Lee and Jax. Welcome. <laughs> What's up, y'all? <laughs> What's up, everybody? As you can see, we have a special guest with us, Miss Shanta Prince. Welcome to Totally Naked. Woo! Yes. So this month, the month of March, if you've been following us on social media, we have been promoting the money madness. We are talking everything money and finances this month. If you were with us in the last episode, we talked to Dr. Hart and Dr. Hart educated us on what a poverty mindset is. And that was the perfect way to kick off this series because now that we know what it is and we can tear down those strongholds, the next thing that we need to talk about is how to increase the revenue streams. And that is where our special guest, Ms. Shanta Prince comes into play. Yeah. She has a business where she uh, does brand management. And she also does uh, has classes and be, is able to teach on how to increase your revenue and to expand and uh, on the gifts and talents that you already have in order to fat in the purse. Okay. <laughs> so with that being said, I'm going to give the floor to Miss Shanta so you could just introduce yourself to a wonderful audience and uh, let them know how to follow you continuously. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much for having me. So I'm Shanta Prince and I help women entrepreneurs to brand their expertise and turn their knowledge into a profitable business. So I focus on how to make money doing things that you're already great at doing, how to take those natural God-given gifts and how to build a business around your purpose. So absolutely. So I'll tell you in the language that we're speaking of um, today, I teach you how to fatten thou purse by just <laughs> who you are <laughs> and using your natural God-given abilities. Nice. Thank you. Yes, yes. Perfect. <laughs> so excited. Yes. yes, I'm so excited. Well, let's go ahead and jump into this conversation today. Yes. All right. So like Shanta said, okay, so we're using some language that y'all like may not be familiar <laughs> with, right? All right. So fattening thou purse. I have to be honest here, okay? So I just recently read a book called The Richest Man in Babylon by George Claston. And if you have not um, gotten an opportunity to read that book or have never heard of it, it is a jewel. Um, it is a jewel, but it is uh, in England, old England. And so a lot of the language is the old English language. But I mean, the stories are so strong and it really helps you to be able to understand like what we are doing with our money and how we can, what fatten our purse or we can have empty purses and you know, like who has an empty purse and wants to fatten it. And you know, these are men too, you know, so you just because we're saying purse, we don't want you fellas thinking like, oh, I ain't got no purse, you know, think of your wallet, you know, think of your bag, your money bag and you know, your coins. And so we are gonna be using this language because like, honestly, it really helped me be able to understand um, how finances can work and like some of the issues that we um, have, you know, like I know as an African-American, I can tell you that, you know, there were some things that I just did not know growing up. I didn't have that expertise. I didn't have that knowledge of how to grow my bag or how to increase thou purse, you know, so to speak. And so um, I just want us to kind of jump into this conversation real quick. So like, if you guys can answer this, why do you think, it's so difficult for some people to fatten thou purse or to keep thy coin. Mm. That's a good one. I, and I think it's so multifaceted. I know for me personally, 
I think it's the lack of knowledge or lack of education about different ways that we can expand our, our sources of, in, of, of revenue. I know for me, this is the first year in 2020 uh, when we actually when we launched Totally Naked, did mm -hmm. my creative side kick in and say, wait a minute, I like to talk. <laughs> I like to encourage, you know, and I didn't think that those were skills that could be monetized. And just something like this platform, you know, not that we're doing this for money or anything, but I could go into, you know, if I wanted to do it, you know, something separate. What I'm saying is this introduced me to a new world of things that I could do to monetize what I thought wasn't skill sets that could be monetized, if that makes sense. So I think that the education, I know for sure for me, is what was limiting my revenue and you know different revenue streams right um i think that just like dom said it's definitely multifaceted um i think um a lot of times we might um spend our money on things that might not be the most appropriate things for us to spend it on mm -hmm. um so i think a lot of times us holding on to certain um things we we, we spend it on things that are that we want other people to see instead of actual investments that might grow our purses. Mm. Mm. That's good. That was good. I, the other thing I think, and I can admit that I was not the best on this, was paying yourself. And you know, there has been I I can't in my adult life. Okay, I have heard people say you should pay yourself first. Pay yourself first, right? Mm. I've heard this. And I have to be honest, I was, you know, hearing this, but it just for some time, it just didn't register with me on paying myself. I always, you know, thought of, well, I have so many other bills to pay. I have so many things that, you know, mm -hmm. I have to spend my money on that paying myself first, you know, was an afterthought. You know, it's like something that I'm doing last. Right. And or I never get to at all because I have so many bills or so many expenses that I can never get to it. And I'll be honest, like with. It was really when like I read the book, like now I have savings and things like that, you know, don't get me wrong, but it was the way that he like actually explained this thing. It was like a 10th of what you earn should be mine to keep. Right. And you know, like, so mm -hmm. this is like, I earned it. Right. At I earned least, it. Like at least 10, at least 10. So if I earned it, I worked hard for it. Mm -hmm. If I worked hard for something, why should I just give it to everybody else and I don't keep any of it? Like I'm okay with that. Right. Are you okay with that? Like, right. and I had to ask. Like, I'm not. Okay I'm not that. okay with that. I'm not okay. With that. <laughs> no, I'm working hard, and then I never. I don't keep any of it. Everybody gets it, and I don't get it. And so, like, I think mm -hmm. that it's like it was a switch. Like, so if you could keep at least ten percent of what you earned, yeah. you earned it. You went mm -hmm. got up early in the morning, clocked into that job. Or, you know, you got up early in the morning and did your business. I think that if you are doing that, then you should be able to keep at least 10% of that. And the 90%, then you live off the rest of that. And so that is a way that you can easily start to fatten thou purse <laughs> or keep it nice. <laughs> so for me, I work with entrepreneurs. So coming from like the, the business side of things and working with people who are, you know they're in the, the the marketplace and they're they're selling their products and their services i think the number one reason that makes people struggle to fatten their purses it is um all around mindset because okay. mm -hmm. what i'm discovering with working with clients on an everyday basis is that it's not about their ability because they can do it we all have the ability to be um to produce we are it's just the way that god designed us he designed us to be producers and we all have the ability to be fruitful and so um it's not about the ability it's about the mindset around what how you feel about money and and what you think you're worth or what you think you deserve and so the first thing is that when it comes to mindset is that somewhere along the lines we have been taught somewhere to believe that making money is difficult. I don't that's know what we got. We've been taught to believe that it's hard to make money. 
That is true. And it's just not mm -hmm. true. And so we we wow. believe that. And so we go into this thing thinking, oh, I, I want to make some extra money, but it's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. And it really is not as hard as we have believed it to be. So once that starts to break away from our mindset, says, wait a minute, it's not it's not as difficult to make money as I think it is. Yes, we have mm -hmm. to be committed and we have to be willing to put forth the work. But I think the the the, the difficulty around how, how we think it's difficult, it keeps us from moving forward and being able to do that. So I would say that is the number one thing when it comes to um, the mindset. And the other thing is when it comes to like, especially like, mon like, like Dom was talking about earlier about like monetizing your expertise or monetizing your knowledge Sometimes we think we have to be at a certain place or I, or I need to be a, a, a guru at this before I can charge mm -hmm. for it. And that's just not true either, right? So I teach that, you know what? You don't need to know everything before you start monetizing. You just need to know more than the people who are paying you. So you don't, <laughs> you don't need to be a guru. If you have one step, if you have one piece to the puzzle, one step, you can yeah. monetize that one step and people will pay you for the one step that you have. And so when we start to really come step out of that and say, you know what, I need to, you know, fatten my purse. So let me step outside of myself and not think of like my ability to make money, not um, put it on like myself or my self-esteem or where I came from or, you know, my past and just accept the fact that I'm worthy because God says I am. Right. So mm -hmm. let me get out here and be fruitful and multiply the way that, that God has designed me to do. Love it. Love That's it. Good stuff. I, love, I love that. I love that, that, was that awesome. mindset, you know, like, because I think that, like, even just as a Christian, sometimes you have to realize, like, am I coming from the place of I am blessed or that I need a blessing? Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, mm -hmm. like, when you're talking about, you know, I just don't think, I think that making money is hard. I think that, you know, like, you get comfortable sometimes. And I was that person that was comfortable. It's not like, you know, like I'm so far removed from this, but it's like you can get into a, into a thought process or a mindset where you just say, I am comfortable with this. They taught me how to do this particular skill set. Like I clock, like I apply for this job and say I'm uh, apply for a job as, as a warehouse worker. And, you know, I get that job and, you know, they teach me the skill set. Like it takes skill to do that, too. And so I learned that. And then that's what I do. And then that becomes a part of your identity as that's what I do every day. Mm -hmm. But just the same as if I clock into that job as the warehouse worker and I learned that job, if I am open to it, there are other opportunities and other skill sets that I can develop just as much. Now, it may not be as easy for me with developing that, but like Shanta said, with hard work, it's a perseverance. You can learn it and be able to grow and increase your financial picture like and, and get right. out of the rat race. Right. And, so, right. and to, to piggyback on what you said, this is the second week, uh, audience that two expertise said the mind the mindset right. is the key to your financial freedom i just want i just want to put the pen in that your mind your mind the way that you perceive the way that you are intaking and outputting this information is going to be the key to your success i just wanted to throw that out there we being totally naked, change your mind. Mm -hmm. And I'll digress. <laughs> so outside of, you know, just your skills, like, so if we, if we are looking to bring in more revenue every month, what are some ways that we can do that? I know that, um, you know, we're talking about building your expertise. Like what are, let's help our viewers understand some of those ways, what that looks like exactly, you know, of building and increasing your your ability to bring in more income like what can we do so the first thing that i would say is um there are lots of different ways let me just put that out there first there are a lot of different things that you can do to make some more money 
Um, one of the things that I teach is how to monetize something that you already have, some type of knowledge or information that you already have. As you know, we're in the information age and people want information and they're paying for information every single day. So I always say start with something that you know or something, some type of ability that you already have. I believe that's one of the fastest ways to start generating income. So if you know how to do something, you can turn it into a course, you can turn it into some type of mentorship program, some type of coaching program and um, start generating income that way. People are making millions of dollars every single day because we have the power of social media, right? Social media is the place where you can go to connect with people from your home all around the world. And so if you think about how many people are on social media on a regular basis, and then think about how many of these people are my customers? How many of these people will be interested in buying something that I have? And so it's surprising when you really think about it, like I think everybody has something that they know that they can put in a form that somebody else can use and sell it, whether you write it in an ebook, whether you create it in a video and you know run through the steps of how to do something, or whether you say, you know what, I'm, I'm putting together my mentorship program, I'm gonna charge $350 a month, and then I'll teach you everything I know about and then whatever it is that you know. So I always say, start with something that you know, even if it's something people are selling um, classes around uh, knitting, how to knit a blanket. People are, you know, selling classes on how to start a business, how to start a garden, you know, and especially like right now and during this time that we're in, you know, with, in, in this pandemic, people, studies are showing that people are spending more time listening to podcasts and people are spending more time on social media. And so the first thing is really understanding, wait, okay, if people are on social media and I have something to sell, then I need to be on social media finding my customers mm -hmm. so that I right. can do my business. So if you think about something that you know, like, okay, you know what? I know I can sell an ebook on this, so I can put together a class on this. And remember what I said, is making money is not as hard as we think it is. If you can create something, and I promise you, if you can create something today, you can be selling it tomorrow and money could be in your bank account starting tomorrow from something that you created today that wasn't even in existence. And you can start marketing it and selling it tomorrow. So that's what I would say. Start with something that's in your head, something that you already know or some type of expertise that you have. Let's say you're really great at putting together a budget. You can do audits with people and say, listen, you pay me this much. And in exchange for that, I will help you to put together your spending budget so that you have more money left over at the end of the month. Any type of expertise or knowledge that you have can be monetized. It is, it, it, it is, it's great that Absolutely. you went to the budget part right at the end of that, um, only because uh, we are definitely talking about how to increase the money that we make. But a lot of times, a lot of times we might be making enough money to do everything we want to do and have right. extra if we sit down and actually do an audit on ourselves <laughs> to, to right. make sure that we are to make yeah. sure that we are living beneath our means and not at or above them. Um, right. So I think that you know it's it's great for us to 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 tell people you know how how to earn extra income because all of that is a is a big thing and we should definitely learn how to do that. But the precursor to that is sitting down and making sure that the funds that we do have are effectively um, leading us in a more financially um, better place. You know, right? I think that's that, that yeah. important as well because I think that even if you are starting a business from the ground up, that sometimes you know the excuse that we have, and you know, and I've been that person that had that excuse before. You know, I don't. You know, I need to get a grant or I need to get a loan, a business loan, in order for me to be able to start my business or to do what I need to do, and um, and sometimes that stops us from getting and starting that business but sometimes you know like you have to be your own um financer at the beginning you know like and it could be something that's mm -hmm. easy and, you know, like i have to make sure that i have printing paper or i have my laptop and a computer um or microphones if you're starting a podcast there's other you know um you know different software and things like that and so having a little bit extra at the end of the month so that you can be able to put into you know your businesses um 
is also helpful. Not saying that you got to have hundreds of thousands of dollars to start, because like Shanta said, like it does, it mm-hmm. doesn't take that much, you know. But right. it, you know, like I said, when you are prudent mm-hmm. and you are being um, responsible with God, has, being a good steward over the things that God has already gifted you with, then you would be able to take those um, those opportunities of where you have a little bit extra so that you can be able to invest in self and reinvest in yourself um you know as you need things because you're going to need some materials you're going to need something right um, so but you can't right. say i can't do it at all and just totally just stop at that block because like you don't have enough finances i think that sometimes you know it will require that you have to look at those audits or looking at your expenditures and saying okay look i'm gonna have to pull back just a little bit i want to have a little bit more and that's when you mm-hmm. pay and yourself so that you can reinvest yeah. yourself because you want your money to grow. Right. Right. And and to, to further what you said, A, I like what you said about the investing yourself, because not only investing in yourself monetarily, but also investing in yourself to grow your knowledge base. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to pay a university or a college or something, but there are tons of free classes, you know, even something as simple as YouTube. There's so many things you can learn off of YouTube and that's a free resource, right? So we got the library. I mean, it's not extinct yet. The library is not extinct yet. You know, we can go there. So there are, I think that, you know, when we broaden our knowledge base so we can say you know what i know step one and i might have the capacity to learn step two and three too so while i'm selling my steps on step one i'm utilizing my free resources to learn step two and three so i can monetize the free information i just got so we have to know that investing in ourselves is also an investment of time You have to be willing to invest time into yourself so that you can have the creative ideas and the additional um, uh, plans that, you know, you put together to be able to move forward. So that that's my piece on on that next on that second thing. But invest in yourself, invest in yourself. I can't say that anymore. Just investing. Like, I think that we are talking about the investing. But when you have a little bit extra, that extra cushion. Then there are other opportunities that you can create some income as well, like whether it's real estate, you know, like um, stocks and, you know, like you can be able to um, invest right. to, um, in stocks and bonds and things like that. And I think that, like, we don't want you just doing that on your own if it's something that you're not familiar with. Like we said, anything that you don't know, if you put some time into it and you educate yourself, you would be become an expert at it. And so um, if, if you know that that's a deficit for you in a, or in an area, you don't really know much about real estate. I don't know as much about, you know, stocks and, you know, I don't understand money markets and things like that. Then it, I think that, that that's just an indication that I want to I need to learn it. Because these are ways yeah. that we grow our money. Like one of the ways that you can grow your purse is for the money that you do have to grow. You want it to mm-hmm. end. And so, um, you know, we just want to make sure that we're giving you as much insight, not overwhelming you, but giving you some of these little nuggets yeah. and tools so that you can be able to start moving forward and saying, you know what? I actually think that I can fatten my purse or I can increase my money. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that we yeah. should be able to leave out of here with that, you know, so that we could be a blessing. And so I agree. Yeah. Please like, share, and subscribe. If this is good to you and this you feeling this in your spirit, you go ahead and like, share, and subscribe. Type this, type replay if you're catching this on the replay and let us know how you feel. Please drop this in this, this video in someone's DMs. <laughs> share the information. Yeah, I think the other thing, like if we can just talk about this a little bit too, when it comes to your expertise, um, I'm just be transparent. I I saw so I wrote a book last year, and it was probably one of the most frightening things. After I had the book in my hand and saying, "What do I do now?" Okay, that was probably it was frightening in a sense because now like everything that I had in my head, all this information, all this knowledge is now here and I have to be able to present it to the world and, or present it to an audience per se. Right. And what if they don't like it? What if, you know, what if it's not good? You know, like all these questions are going in my head. So that's where the fear was coming in. Right. And so I, 
I actually held on to the book for about a, a good month or so with it in hand before I said, OK, I'm going to let people know that I wrote a book. So I guess the point of it is, is that and through like with Shanta and some other mentors that I've looked at online, that there is an audience that needs your gift. Right. You know, God says our gifts makes room for us. And, you know, like I think that sometimes when we just think of what we have in these giftings and we say that, you know, um, I just I want it you know, to do it for me. But there are people that are blessed by your gifts on the opposite side of what you do. And if you never take the opportunity to explore that or even to give them the opportunity to see what you have, what that gift is, then you are not presenting your gift to the world or you're not allowing God to use you for the purpose that he may have created you for. Those things that come easy for you um, are easy for you for a reason, you know? And so, you know, I was getting in the way of getting to the people that God may have created me for to be a blessing to. And, you know, when you are in your gifts, it's being generous to those people. And I think that it's a part of being, gener being having some generosity with your message and with your skill set so that other people can be benefactors of what you're doing. Correct. It's all about the upliftment of the kingdom. Let, let's remember that. I, I don't know if you guys have ever heard this thing, but if God can get it through, to, through you, he'll get it to you. Meaning that if he can trust you with the resources and resources, again, is not just money, whether it's your knowledge base your skill set, your money, you know, so, you know, whatever it is, if God can trust that you are open handed with it, that you're willing to pour into other people, that you're willing to to help make the community work, he'll give you more mm. and he'll give you more and he'll give you more to the point where all of not only are all of your needs met, but all of your wants are met and you have a surplus for others needs and others want to be met. If you look at the most successful people that we know in our society today, they are some of our biggest philanthropists. Some that I can think of off the top of my head right now, uh, Oprah, Tyler Perry of the world, you know, and then we have silent people who do things silently behind the scenes, obviously, but being generous is a surefire way seed and it's the uh, it's the law of seed and harvest if you sow you'll get back you sow good seed you get back good seed so i do agree being generous will fit in thou purse <laughs> for sure yeah um i definitely agree with that and you know especially even you can be generous in so many different ways it doesn't have to be um monetary um, money is one way to be generous but generous with just who you are and with sharing your gifts with the world one of the things um that i do is i teach a free five-day branding boot camp and during this boot camp i give a ton of information for free right and i don't hold anything back and some people have even said i've got more information out of this free class than classes that I've actually paid for. And then I had a client who actually um, joined to join my program to work with me. And she said to me, she said, you gave out so much information that I said to myself, if I got this much in one week, how much am I gonna get for working with you for a year? Right. And so the generosity and the way that I give and the way that I pour, it comes back to me in that way. And so really just having that abundance mindset and not being afraid to give or not being afraid to run out because God is our source and he is the ultimate creator. And so we can always yeah. pull the source when we feel like, OK, you know, and I know that some people are afraid they're, 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 they they get information and they're, they're stingy with it and they hold on to it and they don't want to put it out there but the more that I, the more information that i put out the more it comes back to me so i'm never afraid of running right. out of i'm never because i know that god is, is he's abundant he's an abundant god and so i give freely 
And then people say, you know what? I, you know, that's how I sell by giving. Right, right. man. Right. The mm -hmm. sale is the actual exchange, right? So the way that I sell is by giving first, and then you can see, oh, wow, this is some really good information. I really like this. I want more of this. So that right there was just really becoming the least. If we want to be the greatest, we have to become the least, right? And so really just becoming the least and really serving your heart out and giving your heart out, it comes back to me in sales. And, and that's yeah. because you know I'm called to the mountain of business. I am an entrepreneur, but I found that um, some people do things a little bit differently when, when it comes to selling, but the way that I sell is by giving first and giving without fear of running out or fear of, of, of scarcity. And it is, I believe, a, a kingdom principle and it works. Right. right. That, that, yeah. that, scarcity, that um, to, to piggyback up what you were saying, that scarcity mindset is definitely something that, that will stymie you from, from actually growing because you feel that, oh my God, we, and, and it, it might be a, I don't want to say a, a cultural thing because I think it's more of a, of a economic thing where it's like you know where you might have grown up in a place where you're um where you don't think that well maybe you weren't brought up with a lot and so you think that what you have you need to keep you need to keep you need to keep because you know I'm, i might need this i might need that and you aren't as able to freely give as others right. um and that again goes back to what dom and everybody else said it, it's the mindset you've got yeah. to change that mindset from scarcity to abundance from scarcity to abundance yeah. it is room enough for for everybody to succeed it is room enough for everybody to it really is when you really yeah. think about it because of the way that money exchanges hands from person to person there 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 isn't a there, there isn't a if you get there that means i can't that, like that that doesn't exist right. if you're right. working out of that right. one mindset that um that that god shows throughout his word right mm -hmm. that's like, right honestly, that's good I say this that i went through shanta's um boot camp and like no lie like that was one of the biggest indicators that like i need to have her as a mentor um and i need to be a part of her brand academy and it was because of how generous she was and and the information it was just like she said it was one of those um where i've been listening to other people or i've been reading books and it's like she you know had all this information and all this knowledge and in five days like giving it out for free you know and i think that like honestly like i, I even felt like when she was talking that a lot of it was, I know that you have giftings and I want to help those gifts get to the world. And right. everything that I can do to be able to help facilitate that, that I'm going to do that. And so, you know, like I, that there was the, that sealed it for me. It was like, okay, I really want to be able to get my message out there. I want it to be clear. You know, I want people to like, it's, and it helped me get out of my way. And like I said, right. like I, I actually was holding on to a book for like like a month or two before I let people know I had, and it was just because of fear, fear, and you know whether it's like, am I supposed to be on this platform? Feeling like, am I really an author? Am I good enough? Like you know that whole right. all of these things. But then it's like you know what? If God gave you that message, then it's something mm -hmm. that He needs to get out to the world. Then you know what? This was it was an investment too, but it was worth it to me because one now I'm feeling more confident and I feel like there's so much more to learn where I could be mm -hmm. able to get that expertise out. And so, you know, I'm grateful to her for that. And I just want to like let you guys know that, you know, like being generous, it is about it's not just about you. God created yeah. us all with you know divine purpose and things that he wants us to be able to leave the generation that he created us in like this is our leg of the race so what is it that he has placed inside of you that he wants you to deliver to the world i think it's miles Moran to say there's something that we are to deliver to this our generation and i want to be i want to end this race with god saying you know you know good good job well done my faithful servant you know, i want him to say yes. that and, you know, and I, I want him to say that for you as well. And, you know, and I think that, you know, culture sometimes is the one uh, it, it cultivates us in ways that says, you know, it, you know, we just get a job. We wake up, we get a job, we pay bills and then, we, you know, then we die. You know, and I don't think that that's God's that's not God's blessing for us. And, I, you know, look, right. 
And you know, just, right? no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. Like, I hate to get on the soap soapbox about this, but since you brought it up, um, <laughs> I think that <laughs> my, my, my thing is to our viewers and listeners. Let me tell you, going to just work and just, oh my God, I hate my life. I hate my job every single day, and I'm gonna just be here to get a paycheck and then go home and then get up and do that same thing over again. That mindset is part of the scarcity mindset where it's like, you think that that's all that there is. It's just, I need to get up and I need to go, 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 go to these people job and, uh, and hate everything I'm doing. But it's like, well, it's worth the paper in the end. And it's, it's really not because I don't think many of us have seen somebody go to a job, um, be there for 30 years, or how long and retire, and then all of a sudden they're filthy, stinking rich. That is not. I think that a lot of us have have, have been fed that, have been fed the hey, you need to go to the, to the high school, and then you need to graduate and go to college, and then you need to work for this company for thirty years, and you're going to be a millionaire. And I don't think a lot of us have seen that as the outcome of the majority. I mean, mm -hmm. and maybe maybe I'm wrong. I haven't seen it at all where you are overcome with money just because you stayed out of job for thirty years and you hated it. Like, I, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. If that yeah, makes sometimes sense. you come out of retirement and, you know, and you actually have to pick up an extra job to have some income and you may right. be in your 60s right. or you may be in your 70s and your body isn't the same. You know, exactly. right. this is but, our. But we've been fed that, but, but we've been fed that where it's just, and, and again, that, that's not, that comes from a scarcity mindset where it's like you, this is the, this is what you need to do mm -hmm. when when it's really not. You need to think beyond that. You need to think outside of that and actually have like a plan in place of these are the things I want to accomplish and then this is how I'm going to do it. Because the majority of the time, if you sit down and you think about how much you bring in and take out and everything, the things that you really want to do, that's not going to support that. Like it's, it's just right. it's not not the things that you really want to do. It might support the things that you need to do. But it's not going to support the things you right. really want to do if you want to right. travel this place and, and try, travel that place. Going to a job and making, I don't know, something like thirty dollars an hour is just not. It's just not going to. It's just not going to support that. I mean, you may think it is, but it's just not. It's right. just not. Yeah, that's good stuff. Well, we need to wrap this conversation up. We could talk about this for hours, but that's why we have. You know, the entire month to talk about some of these money things. And so, um, Shanta, do you have anything that you want to share before we go into our takeaways or about like how they can find you? Because I think that you have an expert, like you probably, yeah, your expert academy um, boot camp is just wrapping up. And I don't know if maybe, you know, towards the end of this, if you guys want to follow Shanta, like where you can follow her, because I know she's probably going to do another boot camp here soon um it's definitely something that you want to um be able i think you should follow her thank you so yeah. much i do have a boot camp coming up on monday i have the brand in demand boot camp it is a five-day high level training series where we talk about how to brand yourself, how to position yourself as an expert, even if you're brand new to business. I teach you how to position yourself as an expert, how to create expert content so that you're showing up like an expert and that you're building your brand and you're attracting and closing the right people. And so we go in for five days and then for an additional four days after that, we do bonus sessions where we're talking about social media marketing. We're talking about branding. We're talking about all of the things around building a brand that lines up with your purpose. So that is the primary thing that I really focus on is how do you build a brand and a business that aligns with who you already are so that you're doing things the way that God designed you to do things. So if you want to sign up for the Brand in Demand Bootcamp, you can just go to brandindemandbootcamp.com and get signed up. You'll get an invitation to join us in a Facebook group because that's where the live sessions will be happening at. And it's usually a really awesome time. We have a great time with um, the audience who, you know, everybody's there. They're hungry and it's just an amazing time to just see people so hungry for purpose and so hungry for um, following their passion and really being able to build a business around that. So brandindemandbootcamp.com, as you see at the bottom of the screen, and um, bring a notebook <laughs> because there will be a ton of, of valuable information coming forward. And my goal for the bootcamp is to make sure you walk away with amazing information. And I also make sure you walk away with a game plan 
so that you know, okay, now that that's over, this is what I'm going to do to move my brand and my business forward. Okay, awesome. And, and, and that's, that's good. That's, and that's only for women, right? It well, I well, here's the thing, Just Jack. Question. No, I do have we do have men in the group. <laughs> so, <Okay. laughs> so yeah, we do have we do have some brothers in the group. Now, my target audience is women, but I do not turn the gentlemen away. And I do have gentlemen that come in there. They're like, I don't care if the banner is pink. I'm gonna give you the information. Exactly. I just want the information. I just want the information. Exactly. Yeah. So the gentlemen are welcome too. Just making yes, sure. Okay. Awesome. I always think about that. I'm like, I be wanting to share it with my friends that I know, and I'm like, man, I you know, know she's saying, lady, 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 but like y'all want to, we want to hear this information. Right. right. They don't right. care. Right. <laughs> Right. Uh, I, am, yes. I am shame. I am shameless when, when it comes to, to, to knowledge. I learned. I don't. I don't right. Know exactly. Let, let's go. Right. Right. <laughs> All right. So we're wrapping things up, guys. And so, um, like, we want to do our takeaways as we always do. We want you guys to shift in. We've talked about mindset over the past couple of weeks, but you know, I think that this is definitely one of these areas when it comes to finance that we want to make sure that if we have not made the shift. And or the paradigm shift in our mindset that we're doing that today. And so, like we stated earlier, like I think that the very first thing is that we want to make sure that if we are earning any income, whatever that is, whatever job you're doing right now, or if it's a business you're doing, that you a part of what you earn is yours to keep. And if this is something that, you know, like myself, that you had a difficult time with understanding and getting a grip around, I think that it, to change the mindset affirmations is one way to do that and this is an affirmation that you can actually you know state to yourself in the morning or in the evening state it as many times as you need to if you need to do it five times a day until you can get that old mindset that that old scarcity poverty mindset and go in and flush it down the toilet do this as a mantra like a part of what i earned i earned it and you know you know get 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 indignant with yourself in the in the mirror like i earned it and it's mine to keep like you get mad mm -hmm. about somebody saying that they want to take all my money and I earned it and I don't get to keep none of it. So like, I think that that is one of the first takeaways that I want you guys to have, you know, at least 10% of what you have. You want to make sure that that, that is a part of your money. That's going to help fatten your purse right away. All right. Right away. Yep. And so the second one, let's see. Yeah, so that would be don't let money burn a hole in your pot pocket. And and the thing is, um, you need to make sure that the money that you have isn't going out to just spend things. A lot of us, I'll give you an example. A lot of us, when we get you know st stimulus checks or whatever, we want to go out and buy this this great stuff instead of actually investing that back into ourselves or back into our, our businesses. Maybe you know you need to upgrade your computer so that you can get other things done. Maybe things need to happen that way instead of just I need to go get the new J's that's that's coming out. So don't let money just because you get an influx of money burn a hole in your pocket. And then to go on top of that. We need to also look at other ways to um, increase our, our our income. So there are um, um, a multitude of ways that you've heard today to increase your income. But one of the, 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 the real, another way is to make sure that you're actually plugging into those people who are an expert in where you want to go. So say you have um, some some questions about real estate. You might want to reach out to an experienced, you know, realtor in order to get that. I know a great one. His name is Robert Jackson. He's in Jacksonville, Florida. <laughs> in the area. So if you want to know about <laughs> if you want to know about real estate, you need to reach out to someone like that. His phone number is 904-758-9015. Well, they didn't give me out his number. Seven five eight. Shameless plug. You want me to read over there? Oh my god! But you might want to plug into that. So if you want to know about finances and things like that, you might want to also, you know, get in contact with financial advisors or, or you know, become a mm -hmm. part of your local church and see what what they have there because I'm sure financial advisors go go there or any place else. So you need to make sure that you need to, um, you know, plug plug in with those people who are an expert in where you need to be. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so you kind of mentioned it. So, Shanta, if you can help us out with this one. So, um, developing and knowing your expertise. Um, the the great thing about what you know, we don't often think of it like this, but your knowledge is an asset, and an yeah. asset is defined as something that is valuable. 
And so because the knowledge that you have is an asset, it can bring value to other people and in turn bring value to you when you put it in a form that somebody else can use. That means you have to get it out of your head and into a form that you can actually sell to people so that you can serve them and in turn get, you know, get. there's a saying that says, if you help enough people to get what they want, you'll in turn get what you want. So taking that knowledge and putting it into something that other people can use and that people are willing to pay you for, you're benefiting benefiting them and then they're benefiting you because that exchange is happening there. So be confident in who you are and how you do things and with what you already know. Think about those things that come easy to you that other people struggle with. The stuff that you do in your sleep that other people are like, how do you do? Don't underestimate that because that's the stuff that, that people are willing to pay you for. That's stuff that you do like the back of your hand and people are like, look, I struggle with this so bad. I'll just pay you a thousand dollars and then you just, you know, you just, you just, and it's, it's happening every single day. That is how I make my living. So I know what I'm talking about when it comes to developing and knowing your expertise. So think about what you know and how you can monetize it. Love it. Yes, that was awesome. The next thing is be generous guys be generous. That's another reoccurring theme outside of changing your mindset is that we cannot be closed fist. There's a parable in the word of God that tells, tells us that there, uh, there were three servants that received talent. One received 10, one received five, one received one. The one with 10 wasn't closed. He went out and multiplied. The one who had five wasn't closed. He opened his hand, went out and multiplied. The one who had one was driven by their fear. And because they were fear driven, they closed their fist and buried the talent. And that one ended up with the curse and their talent was given to the one who had 10 and multiplied that. The, right. the point of what I'm saying is, God does not want us to be closed. We are a community of people. And the only way that we continue to thrive is if that we open individually, come together to be a powerful fist, to be a powerhouse for the kingdom of God, but Amen. not closed fist to where we are not being generous. Remember the law of seed and harvest. If you sow a good seed, you will reap a good harvest okay so remember that we just want to take the time again to just say thank you thank you thank you thank you to our absolute wonderful guest miss shanta prince thank you for having me thank you for your time your investment of time your generosity with us today we truly appreciate it if you loved what you heard and you want to hear more from miss Prince, please, please, please again go to um, her website, which is brandindemandbootcamp.com. Well, if you want the bootcamp information, um, please also follow her on her social media and uh, outlets. We will list that in our comments below for you guys to follow. And like always, please like, share, and subscribe. And if this was really good and you know someone who can use this, slide this video into their DM, okay? Okay, <laughs> we love you to life, and until next time, we'll see you later. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.